Hey, what's going on guys? It's DevOps Dan, and today I want to present to you the in-depth guide on how to make a Load Library A DLL injector. So let me show you something first of all. Here is our test program. We're going to launch uh, the copy of our injector. It's searching and it injected. As you can see, the process ID of this is 5616, and here we have it in our injector right there. Then we're going to press OK. DLL main was executed and it was fully injected. Now what we can do is we can inject our DLL into Combat Master. So we're going to wait, and there we go. Process ID 4200, 4200 right there. And as you can see, it works. So guys, by following through this whole video, this is the results you're going to be able to achieve. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're finally in the project, but I'm just going to make a quick disclaimer to you guys. In this video, I'm not going to be showing me typing out all the code because one, that just wastes a lot of time, and two, my keyboard is very loud and annoying, and I don't want you guys to listen to that. I want to explain everything, break it down in detail, and that's how this video is going to be structured. So without wasting any more time, let's finally get this started. All right, so before explaining any of the code, let's just talk about two things quickly. First, what is DLL injection? And second of all, why do we need it? Let's start off with the first thing. DLL injection is forcefully loading a DLL into another program, exe, whatever you want to call it, right? Because as soon as I start up this exe, testtarget.exe, it does not automatically load this DLL. So what we're doing is we're just forcefully loading that DLL into this program. And we do that by making our DLL injector. And here, if I launch it, as you can see, it's been successfully injected into this process, right? There's a process ID, and here it is saying it from the DLL. That's all that is. So moving on, let's just quickly discuss what is the purpose of DLL injection and why do we use it? So DLL injection is making a program do something it is not supposed to do. So this test target program right here, it's not supposed to show this message box saying hello from module, but that's what our DLL does. When it's loaded, I call the message box A function to do all of this, right? And that's pretty much it. Now, there's various different reasons why you'd want to use DLL injection to do certain things, right? One example is we can inject a DLL into a video game so we can read and write the memory internally by just accessing the pointers directly and we can also call game functions and do other stuff like swap V tables, V table hooks, just you know everything. It's a very broad large range of things you can do, right? So that's pretty much it. So now that we've discussed that, let's finally get into coding and discuss all of this. Okay, so here we are inside of the injector, and as you can see, we have a little bit of code here. It's very small, right? First, we have a printf saying searching for target, and then here, this is where we search for our target process. So in this example, I'm just gonna change it to our test target program, so test target.exe, and then as you can see, that's right here. So I'll just run this, and this just makes a counter and it goes up in a loop, right? So I'll press control B, to build it and then we print out the process ID then right here we get the path of our DLL so you have to be on C++ 17 or higher to access the STD file system so I take the current path that we're in so when we open this exe injector tutorial we're gonna be in this path right here and then our DLL is right here so I just take our current path and then append our DLL name to it and then do dot string to get the STD string now, here's the fun part. We go to our inject module function. So this function takes two parameters. It takes the process ID, which game we want to inject into, and then our module location, so the path of our DLL. So here we just set up a few variables. So first of all, these are just for allocating our memory. When we allocate our memory, we want to commit and reserve the memory for its own space. And then we set the page protection, so we want to be able to read, write, and execute memory. And then here, is the main stuff. Now data to write, this is our DLL path, just basically in a byte array of char, a char pointer, right? Then here is the length of our path. And then here, this is the important one, this is our handle to our process. So in order to get access to Combat Master to write our DLL inside of, right, inject it, we need to open a handle so we can read, write, and execute memory, right? So we do all the process writes and everything like that. Then we check if the handle is valid. And then here's a Win32 function called get last error. So if open process fails, it'll give an error code, which will get from here by calling this function. 
So after we check the handles valid, then we move on to allocating the memory in the process. So we allocate uh, a pool of memory based on how big the path of our DLL is, right? So all we're doing is we're just taking our string, our path, and we're writing it into the process's memory. So what we do here is we just allocate the memory and then we allocate the memory on the size based from how long our DLL path is, right? And then we use the flags that I talked about before, right here. Then we call get last error. If this doesn't work, if it doesn't return an address. So now that we've allocated memory, then what we do here is we call the function called write process memory and we pass in this path allocation address, which is where our DLL string is going to be located. Then we write our DLL's path using write process memory to where we allocated our memory. So once we've written that memory, well, once we've attempted to, we're going to do a check, right? All of that stuff. Now, here's the really important part. We get the function load library A from kernel32.dll right here. And then we call this function create remote thread. Now, this is the function that actually calls load library A inside of the process. So what we do, we pass in all these parameters, our process handle, all of that. And then this is the start routine. So once we call this function, load library A is going to get called inside of the process. And then the parameter after the LP start address, the LP parameter, this is like the string that we're passing in to load library A. So imagine this, the process calls load library A like this, process x load library A, right? It calls that function, and then we're passing in path allocation, which is our string. So then it will actually be like this, load library A LP parameter, which is our path allocation. And at this memory address that we've created and allocated is our string. So load library A gets called and our string is passed as our parameter. So once the load library gets called, then our DLL has been loaded into the process and now we wait for our DLL to execute. So let me demonstrate that. So once I launch this, inject your tutorial, searching for target, and there we go, right? So if we go here, you can see that it's injected. Now, as you can see, it's saying waiting for DLL main to execute. Now, this program is technically frozen in a sense, and our injector is waiting until our DLL is not frozen doing a task. So that's why we do a while true loop calling the function wait for single object, and we're waiting for this status. So then it says that yes, our DLL has completed doing its tasks and it's fully injected. So now you'll see once I press OK, module successfully injected and then after that what we do is we close all of our handles so we close the one to our thread first and then our process and that's it guys that is literally all that's to load library a injection now there's multiple different types of injection there's manual mapping there's so many different ones right but this is the most simple idea of dll injection you essentially get a handle to the process you allocate your memory for your DLL path, you write your DLL's path to the allocated memory, then you call the load library A function inside of the process while passing in your path allocation for your DLL string, the path, and then you wait for your DLL to execute, and while it's executing, you're just constantly checking the status, and once it's reached this status, wait object zero, that's it. You clean up and everything's all done. So that's really it guys for DLL injection that is how simple it is and when we talk about things like manual mapping and stuff like that it's basically all of this but instead of calling load library A which anti-cheats can check for what you're doing is you're simulating everything that load library A does right and yeah that's pretty much it so we can also test this on combat master just to show you so we'll change combatmaster.exe and now oh I need to close this We'll press Control-B to build it, we'll go to release, press that, and as you can see, in Combat Master, hello, and there's a process ID, there's a process ID, and we can check in Task Manager to verify, and there it is, 10288. So, that's it guys, that's really all there is to DLL injection, it's very, very simple. And before we wrap up this video, I'll just show you what everything looks like here. 
And everything will be posted on my GitHub as well, so don't worry. This is how simple the DLL is. This is just a write buffer function, because we can't make a message box function like this. Like, there's no built-in one from Microsoft, like how there is for a console. So I just made my own string appender thing function, whatever you want to call it. And then this is our test target right here. Very simple. And that's really it, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on Load Library A. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask them in the comments or join my Discord as well that I have right here. It's the DevOps Dan community. So everything's all in here. I'm more than happy to answer any of your guys' questions, and I look forward to seeing all you there. So take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.